Hello, people of the internet. My name is Combat Wombat. I've been playing video games since I was a young child. The first game I think I ever played was GTA Vice City. Yeah. I played an M-rated game at the age of, like, seven. I'm cool, I know. And one of my favorite things about games is the many mysteries that have popped up over the years. Before we get into the video properly, your boy finally got sponsored! Um, uh. This video is brought to you by the Ridge Wallet. The Ridge Wallet is a very convenient and sleek wallet that can store up to 12 cards inside of it. That's a lot of cards. It also features a handy money clip for your fat stacks. I ditched my old wallet because my bread ain't gonna fit in there. The Ridge Wallet makes the process of getting your card out to pay for your Happy Meal way quicker. Instead of opening up this monstrosity, you just push the card out. It's also very small and fits in and out of your pocket with ease. Did I mention that it blocks RFID signals? Now no one can steal your credit card information with their radio waves. Yes, that's a real thing people can do. Ridge wallets are also very durable, so you don't have to worry about your cat absolutely ravaging it. Ridge wallets come in a variety of different colors and materials. I picked the aluminum gold because it looked cute. If you too want to be a Chad, you can get 10% off of your order with code WOMBAT. Yeah! Don't worry, if for some reason you don't like it, you can send it back for a full refund within 45 days. A big thank you to the Ridge Wallet for supporting the channel. Anyways, back to the video. Gaming mysteries are awesome. They really enhance a game, making you believe that there is something more to it than you originally thought. Giving people something to hunt and look for in a game, trying to be the first person to solve the mystery. Along with this, there are many myths in games as well. Just schoolyard rumors that you hear and then try to test out for yourself. As I said, the first game I ever played was GTA Vice City. I remember hearing a myth about the sharks. If you didn't know, there are actually sharks swimming around in the water in Vice City. Which, I guess, makes that the first GTA game to feature animals. Neat. There was a myth that if you jumped in the water near one, obviously your bitch ass would drown because Tommy Versetti is a punk who can't swim. Get owned. But after that, the shark would eat your corpse. I remember trying multiple times to get eaten by a shark, but it never happened. Don't ask why child me was so interested in seeing Tommy get eaten by a shark. I have issues. Around the same time that I played Vice City, I got a Nintendo 64. One of the games I remember most was Super Mario 64. Pretty much everyone and their grandpappy have played this game. And it just so happens to house one of gaming's most famous mysteries. In the castle courtyard, there was this small statue in the fountain that had a blurry plaque that many hashtag gamers thought read, L is real, 2401. This led to speculation that Luigi was an unlockable character in the game. I don't remember really seeing this mystery as a kid, I only found out about it later on. Obviously, Luigi was never in the game, and honestly, to me, it looks like it says Eternal Star, but this didn't stop people from speculating about it and trying to unlock Luigi. This game came out back when the internet was hardly a thing, so all people had to go off of was schoolyard rumors. There was no digging around in the game files like we can now to say, oh, Luigi ain't here. Oof! There are a ton of other mysteries in Super Mario 64. So many, in fact, that a popular image has gone around called the Iceberg of Super Mario 64. A lot of YouTubers have made videos on it, going over the many mysteries in the game. The further down the iceberg you go, the more obscure and creepy the mysteries get. One of the more popular mysteries or theories that popped up recently is about the game apparently being personalized to each person. Everyone's copy was slightly different. This was apparently done with an experimental AI that catered the game to each person. It's whack. I recommend looking into some videos about it. One of the more popular myths surrounding the personalization theory is that there is a Wario apparition that will chase you in certain versions of the game. It's more of a creepy pasta than a mystery, and it's obviously not real, right? But it's still cool that new theories are popping up in a 24-year-old game. This game is three years older than me. Jeez. The majority of the mysteries I grew up with come from Rockstar's games. For some reason, their games are just melting pots for all kinds of internet theories. I know for a fact that you gamer girls remember the many mysteries in GTA San Andreas. We had people claiming to have seen aliens flying around, Leatherface, ghost cars, and most famously, Bigfoot. I remember hearing about these as a kid and going around trying to find all of them. Of course, I never found them. 
But the fact that we were all searching for unconfirmed, spooky entities in these games was awesome. Does anyone remember Ratman from GTA 4? Supposedly, down in the subway systems, there was a hobo who looked like a half-rat, half-man hybrid who would sprint at you and end you. Instantly. I remember players found this orange blood down in the subway, claiming it was his. Once again, of course, he was nowhere to be found, like my dad. But the fact that we were all driving around in the subway systems looking around for him, sharing our findings on the interwebs was pretty cool. We were basically gamer detectives. Oh, okay, that was cringe. I fondly remember me and my friends even looking for Ratman in the multiplayer for GTA 4, along with a supposed ghost in the abandoned Sprunk factory. You don't know what fun is until you walk around in an abandoned building in a game, ghost hunting with your friends. Anytime we heard even the slightest noise, we'd be like, Oh, what was that? Is that a ghost? Of course, we never found any ghosts, but it was good fun. Just the thought of some really secret, rare encounter that hasn't been proven or disproven makes these games even more fun and interesting than they already are. Another really popular urban legend was Herobrine from Minecraft. Yet another game that literally everyone on the planet has played. If you haven't played Minecraft, you probably don't exist. You might want to get that checked out. Players claimed to see this mysterious figure in their world. The default Steve player model with white eyes. Very spooky, much scary. Players said that he would just watch them from a distance and then disappear after being spotted. There were also reports of players finding long tunnels and weird structures that they didn't make. Not going to lie, if I found a random dildo structure in my world, I'd probably freak out too. Well, I might assume that I built it and forgot about it, honestly. Seems like the kind of thing I'd build. Mojang even took this mystery and made a little joke out of it by putting removed Herobrine in their patch notes for every update. Of course, nowadays we have people who can dig around in-game files and completely 360 no-scope any theories that come up. Now, if someone claims to have seen a three-titted elephant with a giant 20-inch dong running around in a game, people just dive ass-cheeks first into the game's code and files and say, Nah, that's not in the game. Honestly, it kind of ruins the fun of coming up with these schoolyard theories and trying to hunt them yourself. So thanks, ya douchebags! Theories do still pop up in games all the time, so this hasn't completely killed the fun. Sometimes, the mysteries are put in intentionally by the developers, leaving the players to theorize about them. A good example being the G-Man in Half-Life. Who is he? It's never explained. It's just left up to players to theorycraft and discuss it. Game theory dives into this kind of stuff all the time. Once again, my personal experiences of developer-made mysteries are games from Rockstar. They just put a lot of this kind of stuff in their games. It shows that they too appreciate how a good mystery can enhance the experience. I mean, there's an entire Wikipedia dedicated to myths and legends from Rockstar's games. It's great. A lot of you are probably familiar with the Mount Chiliad mystery in GTA 5. You know, that thing that GTA clickbaiters used to spam 50 videos about claiming they solved? Rockstar just slapped a random mural at the top of Mount Chiliad, and there was no explanation for it. And for years after the game came out, people tried to figure out what it means. In my opinion, I think it just shows what happens after you 100% the game. The thunderstorm and UFO are referencing that a UFO will appear at the top of Mount Chiliad in a storm. I mean, look, the red UFO is even under the this deck here. Anyways, people went crazy with this mural, thinking that if you found certain clues or did certain things, that you could unlock a jetpack that was hidden inside the mountain. Rockstar did tease about this with the Doomsday Heist in GTA Online, where they did add jetpacks in the heist which took place in a secret bunker inside of Mount Chiliad. Possibly one of my favorite developer-made mysteries in any game comes from Red Dead Redemption, with the strange man. He's just a random encounter in the game. When John Marston speaks to him, the stranger seems to know things about John that he couldn't possibly know. Like that a young woman was killed by Dutch on a fair raid years ago, and about John's past with the Vanderlind gang. He also seems to speak about morality and judgment quite a bit. He has you do a few missions for him in which we never find out how he knows John. Towards the end of the game, spoiler alert by the way, if you haven't played through the first Red Dead Redemption for some reason, just click ahead. Okay, at the end he shows up at John's house and says some more cryptic shit. This is a fine spot. See you around, cowboy. 
John feels as though the stranger has offended his culture and shoots three shots at him with the fourth one jamming up. None of the bullets affect him at all. And this is the last time you see the strange man. So it just leaves you thinking, who the frick was he? People have made many theories about this character and his identity since Red Dead Redemption's release. The main theory is that he is either God, the Devil, or Death himself. People have noticed that the spot that he says is a nice spot is the same place that John, Abigail, and Uncle are buried at at the end of the game. And that the shots he fires are symbolic of him, Abigail, and Uncle dying, and the fourth shot jamming means that Jack was spared. It's all very interesting, and the strange man even made an appearance in Red Dead Redemption 2, furthering the mystery even more. Interestingly enough, there's a mystery in Red Dead Redemption 2 that still hasn't been solved. It's about a missing princess who was kidnapped at a young age, but would be an adult during the game's events, Princess IZK. Players have been looking for her everywhere since the game first released, and haven't been able to find her. You might think that with the PC version's release, people would have dug in the game files and put this one to bed, but no. Her pedestrian model is actually in the game. Here she is, right there but no one has actually found her in-game naturally. It's possible this could be nothing, or it could be solved eventually. GTA V had some really secret Teen Wolf easter egg that took years to discover and was unlocked by doing very specific things. People are constantly discovering new things in Red Dead Redemption 2 even all these years after release. So, who knows? You could be the one to find this missing princess. Or not. I don't know. Mysteries and theories made by fans really enhance a game and open up a larger discussion for random people on the internet to come together and try to solve them. I just wanted to give my opinion about how awesome they are. That's it. If you have any memories about mysteries or theories in games that you've seen, tell me about them in the comments. I read them. Thanks for watching. I know this was a little bit different from what you guys usually see from me, but I hope you guys enjoyed this. If so, let me know and I might do more interesting stuff like this. Also, check out this amazing art some of my viewers in the Discord server made for our art competition. They're all really good, but this one was the most highly voted. I seriously appreciate people taking the time to make art of my wombat character thing. You can submit art like this in the Discord server. Link below if you want to join and chat with us. A huge thank you to my amazing Patreon sponsors and channel members who keep the channel going. I love you all. Also, you should watch some of my other videos. You'll like them. I promise.